G'day and welcome to this, my video on solving linear inequalities. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? A continuation of the series of videos on this chapter of the Cambridge Essentials textbook. Yay, life gets brilliant. Now, if you're sitting there going, what on earth is a Cambridge Essentials textbook? This is not a video for me. Stop. Don't. Don't. Don't leave. It's Please, don't leave. Don't leave me. It's too much. Um, the basically, uh, although uh, this is targeted to a Australian uh, audience, and particularly the students I'm teaching, and everyone else in the world who's watching, this is obviously about inequalities. And inequalities, like maths, is universal. So uh, listen up, uh, I'm going to show you how to solve them, and all the exciting stuff that goes with it, whether or not you're doing Cambridge Essentials or not. If you are new, hello, welcome. They all start like this, I'm really sorry. Probably a good idea just to fast forward through about the first two minutes. But if you're new, can you do me a favour? Red arrow pointing over there to a little thing in the corner for YouTube saying, please subscribe. Um, it's good to know that people are watching. I have a very small subscriber with a very big head. <laughs> yes, I know. Don't Please don't be rude. Um, and it's just nice to know that people out there are watching and actually getting some value from this. So if you can subscribe, greatly appreciated. Otherwise, let us begin. As is normal, let's look at what I'm going to learn. And what we're going to learn is above, above, above. Do you see? Red arrow pointing and probably saying the learning. Long story short, we're going to have to know what an inequality is. How to express inequalities on number lines and how to solve inequalities. And I'm sure everyone in there is going, yawn, I've done this before. And to be perfectly honest with you, the biggest rule for inequalities is that when you multiply by a negative number or divide by a negative number, you flip the inequality sign. But if those of you who are watching are going, nap, still got no idea what an inequality is, then it's just had a bit of a spoiler. Spoiler alert. Sorry. As I say, this is a continuation of the stuff we've been doing, reviewing algebra. And I can't say enough in mathematics how important algebra is. Being able to swap things around and deal with fractions and, and just treat letters as numbers and vice versa is critically important. Um, in the next video uh, on transposing formulae, um, I, I literally show you how to do like a third of the chapter or a third of textbook using just one basic rule. And the thing is, for example, differentiation. It's not hard. Differentiation is really, really easy. And as I say, next video. The problem is that uh, people don't understand what you're doing it for. So that's one problem. The next thing is some of the algebra later on deals with fractions. And everyone in the world goes, oh, I can't do fractions, it's too hard. Yes, you can. Everyone can do fractions if you follow one simple rule, which again, I'll come to in just a moment. So I suppose the first thing is, what is an inequality? Well, the best thing is to show you. So there's one greater than, there is one less than, there is one greater than or less, uh, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. So basically, it's just a symbol that says what is on the left-hand side is either greater than what's on the right-hand side or vice versa. And I got my hands around the wrong way there. So for example, if I wrote six is greater than four, then that is an inequality. And it's true because this value here is greater than that. Now, how do we know which one's the greater? Again, it's really weird because lots of people go, oh, I use crocodiles. And I'm like, okay, whatever gets you out of bed in the morning, that's fine, you use crocodiles. Me, I'm just like, well, this side here is bigger than that side there. The gap is bigger. <laughs> so, if bigger gap, bigger number. Smaller gap, smaller number. Yeah. What about this greater than or equal to or less than or equal to? Well, again, sometimes we want to know numbers that fit into a certain range that are greater than or equal to a particular thing. So, I don't know, is six greater than or equal to six? I should cocoa. Is 7 greater than or equal to 6? Yes, it is. 7 is greater than or equal to. It's not 7, it's not greater than and equal to. It's greater than or equal to. Now, with me, inequalities, visually, I treat them like an equal sign. I never write them as an equal sign. But on the whole, the algebra is pretty much the same, barring that one rule I started with a moment ago. And I just treat them like an equal sign. So, you have to be able to express inequalities on number lines. And anyone out there who does not know what a number line is, I suggest you pause and go and look it up because that's terrifying. If you're doing methods one and two and you don't know what a number line is. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is a number line. Well, not quite because I'm putting my numbers on it. So what I'm going to do is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And the world goes crazy because I've just proven I can count. So what we're going to do is draw a number line to show the solutions to the following inequality. Now, in that situation, it wants us to show all the values of x 
that are greater than three, not greater than or including to three, all of them that are greater than three. Now, first things first there, there are a shed load of numbers. You thought I was going to swear then, didn't you? There are a shed load of numbers that actually are greater than three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. To infinity and beyond. Um, but what about the decimal numbers? 3 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 
use the same patterns or the same rules for algebra. What am I doing here? Now, first things first, we've got the minus three in the X, or minus three, must remember that minus three is connected, so I'm gonna leave it alone. They're kissing, whole new discussion. I wanna get rid of this four plus four, take away four from both sides. Three X is less than or equal to 10 minus four is six. Now, this is where life becomes interesting because I now need to divide by negative three. And when I multiply or divide by a negative number, I flip my inequality sign. So that literally means I reverse it. So that becomes six on negative three. So X would have to be greater than or equal to negative two. Now, if you don't believe me, put values in greater than or equal to negative two, and I guarantee you that that will actually work. All right, brilliant. And that's actually, to be perfectly honest with you, mostly it with inequalities. Here we go, dreaded fractions. What do I have? 3x minus one on four minus two x plus three on two has got to be less than minus two. Okay, this question was extracted from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, which is a freaking awesome textbook. Love, 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 love. Um, so uh, thanks very much to Cambridge for giving me permission to use our examples. First thing I'm gonna do is actually put those in brackets. It is critically important when you have more than one term on the top of a fraction to put it in brackets. Um, it, it, this minus sign here could make all the difference between getting a right answer and a wrong answer. Now, my view of it is this. When you have a fraction and you don't like a fraction, you've got to divide by four there, multiply absolutely every single term, fractions or otherwise, by four to get rid of it. And this is what's gonna happen. So when I multiply by four, that obviously gets rid of the divide by four, it cancels it out, leaving my brackets of three X minus one. I've now got to multiply every other term by four. Now that's the same as multiplying by four on one, and when you multiply by four on one, with any other fraction, if you remember, when you multiply fractions, multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. So that is gonna give me minus four lots of two X plus three on two. Now it stays as two because I'm multiplying by four on one. So, and that becomes, oops, see, and almost did it. Less than, and then multiply that by four gives me negative eight. See, now you're gonna say, oh, so much, well, it really isn't because it's actually just breaking this down and making it simpler for me. I've got to divide by two here. So what am I going to do times absolutely everything by two. So that's going to become two lots of three X minus one minus four lots of two X plus three. Now, so at this point people go, well, why doesn't that become eight? Well, remember we're getting rid of this divide by two. So what's on top of that fraction stays exactly the same. I don't multiply that by two. And that becomes less than minus 16. Now I have a much, much simpler thing that I can work out. So two lots of three X is six X minus two, minus four times two X is minus eight X, minus four times plus three is minus 12, is less than minus 16. Okie dokie, let's give myself a little bit of room. Let's do some simplification. Six X minus eight X is minus two X, ugh. Minus two minus 12 is minus 14, is less than minus 16. Okay, well, I'm not gonna flip my inequality sign yet, but I know it's coming. So what am I gonna do now? Well, I'm gonna add 14 to both sides, which gives me minus two X is less than, add 14 to that side gives me minus two. I'm gonna divide now by a negative number. And when I divide by a negative number, what do I do? Flip the inequality. So it becomes X is greater than minus two divided by minus two. So X has to be greater than one. And there we go. Now, I can't say enough with that particular example, trying to get it so that it's on the screen, how I do that with fractions every time. Algebraic fractions are disgusting. You use this method of getting rid of the bottom by multiplying everything by it. it might add two extra lines working, but imagine in an exam if you then got all of the question right rather than all of the question wrong. To me, a bit of a no-brainer. Now, what does it look like on a graph? What do inequalities look like on a graph? Well, ladies and gentlemen, just like this. So when I took uh, 3x minus 2 is less than 7 and solve that, if you remember, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So it gives me 3x is less than 9. So dividing both sides by 3 gives me x is less than 3. When I put that on, well, we know that x equals 3 is the vertical line through 3 on my graph. What you'll notice here when we drew the graph is not only is it shaded, and I, I think I just said this was desmos.com, great, great online graphing system. It's a dotted line. 
So this is brilliant. Desmos goes, well, I know that you can't include the value of three. How do we know we're not including the value of three? Because there's no less than or equal to sign. So the dotted line says, I'm not going to include three, but I'm going to shade all the values of x that when substituted into that equation will give you a value of less than seven. Hence that sort of pinky blue, uh, reddy shaded area. Those are my solution set sets. And in fact, it's just very similar to drawing a number line because your x axis is nothing more than a number line. So here's my value of three. Here's my open circle. And here is my arrow pointing that way. All the graph is doing is sort of shading everywhere instead of drawing an arrow. Yay! Last part of this video is that you can actually use CAS to solve this. OMG, is there anything the CAS calculator cannot do? Ah, well, first thing I'm going to do is load up my CAS. So having loaded up my CAS, here we go. I'm going to hit main. And as is normal, one of the great functions in mathematics that uh, we use ever such a lot is a solve. It basically says to the calculator, look, I'm going to put an equation in. And I'm going to tell you what letter I want you to tell me. And can you just give me the solution? Can you do all the hard work for me? And it goes, yeah, sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade out and back in and uh, have entered my equation for you. And I'm back, but I'm not quite finished because it's important to know that for the uh, Casio class pad that, uh, you know, these inequality signs are under math three. Now, if you're not a class pad user and you're a TI Inspire user, I'm really sorry to hear that. No, I'm not really. I used to be a TI Inspire user and I loved it. It was great. But sorry, Casio class pad, loving it at this moment in time. So I'm going to hit my inequality sign, which was just there. I'm going to put a negative two and I'm going to put a comma. Now, when you use the solve function, you have to put a comma and tell it what you want it to solve for. And in this situation, I want the letter X to be solved. I'm going to close my bracket. I didn't need to. I can hit execute. And lo and behold, there is my solution. X is greater than one, which if we were to want to revise, uh, scroll back through my thing, that's exactly the answer I got. Well, there we go. That's it. This is lesson done. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you learned stuff. It was on the chapter reviewing linear equations and solving inequalities. If you haven't already done so, can you do me a favor and hit that circle which says subscribe. Um, greatly appreciate it if you could and tell your friends out there that I'm around. Um, otherwise, it's been good seeing you. Uh, there's a video loading over there as well. Um, it's much more maths fun. Uh, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next time. Maths Guru, out.